fucking warm. Hello, kid. Oh, I'd like to play a game. Oh, God. Yeah. Hello everybody, welcome back to Plants vs. Zombies. I'm Ryan Sierra 2, and this is the year 2022. And... Our Lord and Savior, Hazusa Manus. Hazusa Manus. Yeah, you trying to play Path of Exile in a sec? Yeah, I mean, I got it. Yeah? I flaunt it. These ice. I want it. If you want it! Oh, what am I sitting on? Oh. My ass. No. My pants are restrictive. Oh, is it the, uh, what TikTok refers to as, You got a free. Yes. But also, <laughs> no, it's my, it was my switch. When I was throwing the, the stuff onto the bed. I was looking at TikToks the other day, and this one person was saying, Man, isn't it so crazy that people um, censor themselves in real life? Like they say unalive instead of kill in, in real life yeah. to get past the TikTok algorithm in real life. Isn't that so cringe? Meanwhile, I say TikTok audios in real life, like without any context. Yeah. I'm the I'm the most online. Like there's no way. Like even with someone who is a TikTok regular, like you, like you, you're, you're basically like a fucking like iPad kid with how much you get on TikTok. You're not I an iPad say. Kid. <laughs> You even cough with your mouth open too sometimes, little iPad kid. I do not. That is a lie. Stop spreading lies on the. <laughs> Stop being fake media. <laughs> no, actually, no. What you do is you, uh, you like sneeze kind of a little openly, and I'm like, whoa. AIDS. Um. But, uh. No, you... There's no shame in that, though. <laughs> but what happens is, um. I will, I will say, like, the other day we were in, like, the store, we were in, we were in Wegmans, I think, and I come up behind you, and there's that one TikTok audio of that guy, there's this, like, one, like, British kid who got, who's, there's a TikTok audio, and he's going, you're on your period, you're on your period, and, like, I said that to you, and you just went, wait, seriously? Fuck? Shit? Well, because you just randomly came up to me and started spouting, like, what, demonic shit. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm sitting here as a, as a lady, as a lady of the day, going, oh yeah. shit, I may have a period issue. Thank god. Oh, Bro, it's okay, we all got a little bloody down there from so time to time. I'm playing Sims. Yeah. And one of my friends in the Sims world just called me and said, I'm happy you picked up the phone, Sasha. I adopted a child. Also, would you be willing to stop by and lend any pairs of chicks you have? Good lord. I mean, uh, sure, as long as I can pee my pregnant ass there. Pee my pregnant pants off. No, yeah, because sometimes when you visit people, like, in their houses, if you, like, you know, go to the bathroom or whatever, they're like, hey, stop that, that's inappropriate. Or if you cook, they're like, hey, stop that, that's inappropriate. And it's like, you invited me here. You invited me to your house. Can't I cook in your house? Well, one of it was like Sasha's parents' house that uh, I stopped being involved in mentally once my favorite kids grew up. So. Crazy. Oh, oh my God! They're moving. They moved into this house. I used to own this house. That's crazy. I used to live in this house. Now it is only my memory that haunts these walls. Well, I'm coming to give her some parenting tips, so she better fucking listen to them. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Step one about being a parent, gulp. Step two about being a parent, uh, don't play around zombies. Step three about being a parent, plant plants. Even my dead pet's graves are still here. God damn. I mean, what are you gonna do about that? I mean, my person's gonna go piss before she pees her pregnant ass. My god. Make 
Oh, I already made a wish recently. God, faith in me, baby. Baby, stand by me. This is a lot of areas for this pregnant. Like, she's in there, like, she's like six months pregnant. Seven it doesn't months. matter because we're going to kill the. Oh, are you dude. playing the level where you have to, like, use what they give you? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a few of those. Um, I'm doing the vase breaker. Oh, this will happen to, a few more times. Are you more midnight plants? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Break those vases nice and good, baby! Eat that ass nice and raw. <laughs> Let's see, what is this? Oh, another one! I wonder what the squash plant does. Does he may have squanch? And squanch? Squanch. Alright, cool. What's the third one of this? Man, I just want to get to the rooftops already. Break him. Break it. Yeah. Yo, this is the thing, dude. This is the problem with, like, all of those all those silly little post-apocalypse zombie movies where they're like, Oh, no. They would totally kill everyone. Zombies would just be awful. It's like, okay. That's because you don't have plants and a guy named Crazy Dave. All right? Like, come at me again. Slash S. Oh no. Oh no. God dang it. Are you trying to kill every one of your non zombie friends inside that poor little non zombie house? Okay, good. So now, okay, good. We do get the metal bucket in the end. Good. That would have been disastrous. Sort of. I have the lawnmowers. I wish that, um. You know, the lawnmowers is straight up like with bumpers. By the way. Plot twist for everyone watching at home. I do worse when I play with bumpers in bowling. That's weird. You know what I do worse? What? When I have to carry a heavy ball. Have to carry balls. Have to carry heavy balls in my hands. Yeah, I don't know. I've never had to use the split pea. Um, even? Well, you know, I mean, whatever. Whatever. What I say as I go to use the split pea. Because, I mean, I always have just been able to throw the hypno shroom on this side or the squash on this side um, with the tempo that they come out at and try to eat my plants. So, but, you know, better safe than sorry. You're just trying to just kill everybody here, you know? Uh, the zombies, because they're coming, so. Mm. He even says, the zombies are coming. You know, that's... that's propaganda. Uh, a little bit. You know, he's... he's... he's telling you to, like... He's, like, trying to get at you for, like, you know, not wanting to kill all the zombies. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Um... I'm curious, what do you think of comic books? Uh, a comic book mangaka? What do you what do you think? You think Alan Moore is a good mangaka? Kawaii desu Aranmoru? I'm sorry, what the f <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to ask like I know what you are trying you, to No 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 no. Mm -hmm. What do you think a favorite part of like a comic book author's process is? Like <sighs> I guess in large part it's gotta be the art, but like because like I always wonder like Whenever a story, like, gets really big and it's out there on the big screen and everyone sees it, everyone always, like, gobbles up the themes and the social commentary. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, dude, you know, when Homelander flips this car and the boys, this is a symptom of our over-encrouching government interference in police state. But, like, and I'm, like, I'm sure, like, when the authors made that, they probably had fun with themes and social commentary, too. But, like... You think a lot of the time they just like dick around with having fun scenarios that they can put characters in. Because that's kind of what I like to do with my stories. So. Yes. Um, no, I, I do think that there's an element of like, um. Like, do you think most of the time they're just kind of, you know, they're, they're just having fun and then they kind of happen upon social commentaries in a serendipitous way? 
I think that they don't. I think some actually start out like being social commentaries. Like, um, mutants, for example, in the X-Men are supposed to be, like, a metaphor, you know, they're supposed to be the minority and, you know, the oppressed, like, class, uh, class and, you know, in groups of people. And so, you know, there's kind of, um, and it's, and so when you talk, so, like, when mutants are talking about, like, laws and stuff placed against them, you can kind of see that, like, allegory and that, like, metaphor um for them so I, so i do think that some go like into it with that frame of mind like already and then i do think some are like they're they're like doing they're having this like giggle this laugh and then all of a sudden it turns serious and they're like oh i stumbled upon like talking about something well those are the ones where it's like you know it's like a wacky, like, goofy, uh, thing that's not supposed to be serious. And then you know when it gets serious that it's, like, the author wanting to talk about something. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, that plays into, like, uh, you know, an author's sense of voice, which is such an interesting thing as, like, still a, a budding, budding writer myself because... Voice is this weird thing where experienced people can do it, and if you do it, you're wrong, right? Like, because it's like, if you try to have a voice, it's like, whoa, grammar. And if you try to focus on grammar, they're like, hey, where's your voice? Um, and because usually, I think the, the thing about social commentary that is successful is usually when it uh, showcases the author's sense of voice. So. Yeah. Which is why I think, you know, it's it's very interesting and very telling of, like, like, it's very interesting when, like, you see artists, like, fight, or not artists, but, like, authors fight against something. Like, for example, um, you bring up the boys, and they, you know, they're fighting against, like, people thinking superheroes are good, but they're not against showing violence against women in a unnecessarily graphic way. Mm -hmm. Like they're, and then when people are like, hey, you know, this is a little odd, a little funky. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's a comic book. Of course it's gonna be like this. So it's like while they're, while they're rising at one social issue, they're demeaning like another. And sometimes, so sometimes comic books don't have a good balance in talking about several issues because they'll find a way to like devalue two others while valuing like one. That's a very interesting point. I, yeah, um, I don't know if I have any examples to riff off of that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it, it is so interesting, right? Because, yeah, you're right. Because that was the issue with the boondocks, right? Where people to this day, I guess, have the same issues you had with it. Where they're like... Well, actually, you kind of had a, somewhat of a different issue than this one video I say I watched from a, from a person of color YouTuber. Because they were talking about how basically boondocks is... Um, you know, they, they get on about talking about the issues that the black community faces, and especially with capitalism, and especially with critiquing Ronald Reagan. It's so weird, because um, TikTok right now, you know, as you know, like, leftist TikTok hates Ronald Reagan. And it's so intriguing, because Boondocks came out with an episode on Adult Swim, like, oh my god, I must have been, like, 9 or 8, I don't know, I'm 26 now, do the math, like, um... It was forever ago. And there's that scene where where one of the brothers is like, Ronald Reagan was the devil. And it's like, holy crap, that's a bit prophetic. Um, but, uh... <clears throat> um, it's, it's interesting, uh... Because I was watching a video essay and someone was saying, yeah, the boondocks is good and so-and-so and here and here, but it has this issue where, um... It's really big on doing, um, like othering certain like black people where like it separates from it, it does this thing where it's like oh i'm a you know this type of 
so this type of black person who's much more intellectual and like you know accessible versus like you know those black people um i, I forget what that's called in uh the community spaces where like black people amongst themselves will other other black people i know that happens a lot with black men to black women that gets talked a lot about on tiktok um or black dudes will be like i don't want to date black women i like white women too you know um yeah, yeah. um anyway uh, uh what's interesting about that though is you ever feel like i mean like white dudes don't like white women though like just just the dudes of their race don't like the women of their race you know it's kind of across the board like i remember because i remember like this one time where it was um I guess like a white uh, white girl on TikTok was saying about how like she went to Japan and Japanese men were like fetishizing her or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, man, it's just because like Japanese men like don't like Japanese women, like more or less. From what I from what I gather, hashtag only what I've seen, um, and I'm I'm an N of one as they say in sociology, um, but. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I just don't think dudes of their race like women of their race, like, across I the board. I think the issue is, is so... It is hot in this room, by the way. It is, is it still, like, 80 degrees today? It's, like, November, and it's 80 degrees. Oh, God, wait, I should put the fan towards me. I just realized it's, like, blowing into the mic. Um, so, a recent issue has been, uh, with Drake. I don't know if you, like, if you, you know, understood, like, that issue, uh, and whatnot, um, but... I don't think so. I mean, Drake's been on and off weird for, like, ever. So, so he released a new album, of sorts, and I only know this because, unfortunately, I, I know Instagram. Uh, yeah. stuff, and so... You little, little Instagrammer? Yes. Unfor unfortunately, I had to know this knowledge against my will. Um... But, nonetheless, I have. Um... <laughs> so, anyways... So he, yeah, go on. So he... He did this... Did this thing. Um, he... Put out an album, I guess called her something like her loss or whatever i think that's what the album is called uh -huh. i do not remember it's fine um and one of the one of the things is he has this weird thing against megan the stallion oh okay um and like he accuses her of like uh he accuses her of like lying Why did about I do that? Being... there was no clout Anyway, go on. Yeah, like, he, he lies about, like, um... He lies about her, uh, saying... He's like, oh, she wasn't, she wasn't shot, you know? Like, what, you, what are you, you... Like, she's just lying about it just to get clout. Like, you know, it's not a real thing. Um... Guns aren't real, dude. And, you know, and he has an... And then he has another lyric. Where, like, he, for some reason, uh, like, hates the fact that Serena Williams has a husband that supports her. Don't know why. Couldn't be me. Um, this man is just weird. Wow, yeah. And her and Serena Williams' husband came back and was like, "Dude, I'm very excited and happy to like support my wife. So you can get mad about it, I guess, but like I'll continue to be like a groupie to my wife, like using the." I'm sorry, I've already lost the plot. Weren't we talking about Drake? Yes. He made he made two song lyrics being upset at Megan the Stallion and Serena right. Williams. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. And so Serena Williams' husband clapped back like about it because he was like, "Dude, I'm not dealing with you. I'm just gonna. I'm glad to be a groupie to my wife and my daughter." 
Right, right. And so that's why people were making the joke that, like, you know, this man was... He, that, like, Drake upset, like, the co-founder of Reddit. Because <laughs> her husband is, like, the co-founder. Oh, wow. Well, you know, these days, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to get on Reddit's bad side. No, it's so interesting. I was... You know, it's so weird. I was watching a video last night, and they were saying, like, Reddit has a censorship problem. And I was like, oh, oh maybe, whatever. And then, and then I looked into this, and they were like, well, they have a problem with vetting people. And I'm like, wait, how the fuck? That's the same thing. Um, 